Well, hey guys, welcome back. First garage video on the uh, Tiger 1200 Rally Pro. And today's um, task is to get my sat nav mounted with my um, Turatec lockable mount onto the Tiger. We're going to be mounting it on the um, on the top of the clocks. Um, I've got some bits and bobs to change. I've got to take this handle off, um, which adjusts the, um, the, the windshield. I'm going to be replacing that with a, um, a 22 mil bar so I can get the sat nav mounted on top of the clocks. Now I've got a few bits and bobs to do. I've got to take it to bits because we need to um, I need to route this wire down from the top of the clocks um, to the not I'm not going directly to the battery. I'm actually going to take off this um, phone phone charger. It's a little case that comes with these bikes that you can put your phone in, you can charge it. I'm not going to use that so I can, I'm going to take that off. But there is a switched um, electrical socket on the back. So I'm going to take that out and I'm going to use that as my sat nav power. Um, I've got a lot of other accessories to put on, which I'm going to be installing with um, the Heeltech Thunderbox, which is basically just a box that allows you to connect up to four um, different accessories and it's all switched um, power so it doesn't drain your battery. But I'm going to go, I'll make a different video on that one. But for this, for, for today's video, we're just going to be powering or using the, the cabling from the sat nav. So I've got to take the bike to bits, got to take all this paneling off, run this cable from the top of the clocks under the tank somewhere to the back um, where, the, where the phone case is where I can get some power to it. So this is the 22 mil um, bar. This comes from, I think it was from Greece it came from. All the parts that you'll see in this video I'll link downstairs in the description so you can order them if you need to. So that's basically going to mount to the back um, there. And then I can mount my um, SW Motec sat nav bracket to that. And then I can then attach my Touratec lockable mount to that and then I've got the sat nav on top. So quite a few bits and bobs, but there's really no other way of doing it on this bike, to be honest, unless, unless you want to mount it to the to the bar clamp or somewhere on the bars, but I like it over the top of the clock. So that is the way we're going to be doing it for today's video. Now, first thing I'm going to do is remove this phone uh, case because I said I'm not going to be using this and then I can show you the, um, the socket underneath that you can use to then power any sort of accessory, it doesn't have to be your sat nav. Um, but I thought I'd use this power rather than um, taking up a port on my Heeltech um, box. Nice idea, I think that Triumph have made this phone case at the back, but I can't see anybody really using it that much, to be honest. My, uh, my phone's gonna go up mounted on my bars with a quad lock um, wireless mounting charger, so I shan't have much need for this. So that just pulls straight out of there. These two um, plugs go into two rubber grommets at the back and then you can remove the power cable. There you go. So I'm going to use this MS. Um, it's a Zumatomu um, connector. Again, I had to order some that I could connect to my Garbin uh, cable power cable but I'll put all the links to these down in the in the description below I think it's a Zumatomu 090 two pin two pin socket but I'll show you them in a sec so this is the Zumatomu uh, connector that I ordered from China I got them on Amazon um, I got them in a box of five for about 12 bucks you can get them singly but it cost about five bucks for a single plus postage so it didn't make much sense so I bought a few uh, few extras so that will then probably or should connect straight into there And it's probably smart to actually see if power is getting to that before I continue any further. Connect the sat nav to there. No, still no power. Genius. I wired them up. Correct. Let's just see if see if the phone charger works. Nothing's ever bloody simple, is it? Well, there you go. 
socket doesn't work. Brilliant. Right, well, unfortunately, no idea, but I can't get power to this socket. There's no, or the fuse isn't blown. Um, there's two fuses in the back here, one for the auxiliary um, pillion socket and one for the USB socket. And they're both fine, but there's no power to that socket. That's, that's a bit of a pain in the ass. Great start. So what I'm going to do now is install my Heeltech Thunderbox to the battery and then hopefully we can get power to it. But let's have a swig of that. I'm also going to install um, my cable for my Optimate 4 charger. That definitely needs to go to directly to the battery and not through the sun Thunderbox because it won't be live. So that's just for me to uh, charge my battery. And I'll probably stick the socket through the heated seat cap because this bike doesn't have the seated, um, the heated seat. So I can take that cap off when I want to get to the cable to charge the battery. So let's see if we can do it without blowing ourselves up. That's a bit of a shame, but I'll, uh, I'll leave it for now. And um, when I take it in for the first service, they'll have to uh, they'll have to look at why there's no power to that socket there. Bit bizarre. It's one of these so uh, one of these fuses here, but they're all they're all good. So a bit weird. Right, that in there. And I need the Thunderbox pos and neg. So both positives on first. Very important. So now with this Thunderbox, I can attach up to four accessories and that's all switched. Um, oh, dickhead. Helps if you put, the, put it through the battery cable as well. <laughs> yeah, so I can attach up to um, four powered accessories switched um, so it won't drain the battery. Neg, neg. So that's a good sign. We've got power to the, um, the Thunderbox. What I'll do is just tighten them down just to make sure everything works and then I can tidy this up at a later, later stage. So positive to positive. I'll probably solder the ends of these just to keep things neat but I just want to make sure that it all bloody works first what a mare oh, pause to pause neg to neg now I believe for the Thunderbox you actually have to start the bike so it's definitely got standby power bike on. I believe you have to start it. So after five seconds should come on. So that's now release power. And we're charging. Right, so Thunderbox works. So after you turn the bike off, it should take a few more seconds and it cuts the power. Goes back to standby mode and it is now not charging. Sat now, sat now turns itself off. So now, okay, so we're gonna to have to go down that route with the Thunderbox first. As I said, I'll have to tidy all that up in a minute, but it is working. So next job is to take all this paneling off so I can wire this shower of shit all the way up to the sat nav.
there, that is one part that isn't screwed, it's a little push with it to get that little. Be so careful with these plastics. Stayed in one piece, just sounded rough as. So I've got to run this cable somewhere through. I'll do that off camera now and then I'll, I'll show you in a bit where I've, uh, where I've run it down to, but probably somewhere down under the back of the clock through the, um, the triple clamp and then somewhere along under the tank, probably down here. Yeah, we'll go with that. I'll do that now and then I'll, I'll show you in a sec. So if you want to do a good job in hiding the cables, you need to take all this nonsense off as well. There's a bit of the uh, bits of the screen all over the all over the show. These bits just pop off, no screws, but this this here has got four bolts, so you can remove the whole entire thing. So it's just a bit easier to get your cabling done. So I've put the cable in in through the back of uh, or where the brake cables come up in through under the frame there and then it comes out along the frame there's the sort of Garmin uh, transformer and then I've got enough play there to get that into the Thunderbox or possibly even if I can get the socket working eventually to go into there if I want to free up a port but I can add a bit of extension on there if it uh, if it's not long enough so what a palaver don't you just love cabling so now it's here, much neater to go up under the the back there. I'll probably have to put that back on now because the sat nav will move with the screen as I adjust it up and down. I need to have enough slack on this cable that it's able to uh, move up and down. So, but yeah, to get that cable behind the dash, you need to take um, you need to take this bit off. So. I'll put this back on, probably just hand tight, just loosely. This is fun, isn't it? First garage video on the Tiger, and it's been an absolute disaster. I never run out of beer. Well, I haven't run out of beer. I've got some in the bar, but I shall uh, have to go and get another beauty. Right. So I've got some slack on that cable there. That's pretty good. Still going to be able to turn, though. That's going to be a, something to look at. I'll, uh, I'll deal with that in a bit. Jesus. So now I've got to get this on there. And then I've got to get this on there. Oh, ha. It's the thing, isn't it? If you want these jobs done properly, pay somebody else to do it. <laughs> oh, I do not want to be dropping bits of this now straight into the TFT screen. Again, I shall uh, have to adjust to this all later on. Right, we're getting there. Not the easiest job I've ever had to uh, to do. A lot of buggering about. But imagine what you'd have to pay pay in the shop for somebody to do it for you. <laughs> worth bunging the screen on. We're going with the Puig Dark Short. Not the most tidy of workspaces here. Hopefully I've done this all right. I've got to take all this back to bits. It's going to be a, a real treat. Welcome back. Good morning. And it is morning. I've had to have a, a change of beverage. Having had a disaster of an evening last night with this contraption, I, uh, I decided to leave it and come back to it this morning, but we're all pretty uh, pretty good. We're done. The sat nav is now wired in to the um, Heotech Thunderbox. But overnight, for some reason, this power socket is now working. No idea. So all that pissing around yesterday, 
yeah, I don't know. Eventually, I'll probably, if I need the, the extra port on the Thunderbox, I'll probably take the sat-nav out and then rewire the plug back into that if it now works, just so it frees up a, an accessory on the Heotech Thunderbox. So I've routed the cable up through under the frame, goes under the tank into the front. Hopefully you can see that it comes up through here under the bars and then behind, behind the screen, up around the back, and now it is now um, in position. I had a nightmare with this as well, getting it straight. It was doing my nutting. Um, it was slightly off, so I had to mess about with it. And in turn, I've managed to round this bolt off. So that, that is now not coming out if I ever need to take it off because I've rounded it off. So I'll have to drill that out if I have to, but it's now on, it's now powered, it's working, all is good. Also, I was having drama getting the sat enough to click into its um, housing, but that is now all sorted as well. So we're all good. So that is now on, secure. And if we start up the bike, we have got switched power. It's on standby, the heel tech box, wait for the power to come on. Takes about five seconds, power is now on. That now comes on. Winning, but what a palaver. I hate doing electrics, but we're done. Right, so now I'm, I'm gonna leave the bike as is, because as I said, I've got more, a load more accessories to, to run down through. Um, so there'll be another video to probably to come on that. And uh, I'm gonna get on with it. So thanks for watching. Hopefully it's been of some help. Hopefully it wasn't an absolute disaster. And um, I'll see you in the next one.